But <clears throat> you might be asked to also condense a logarithmic expression or rewrite a sum or difference of separate logs as a single log. So if you're asked to rewrite sum or difference or separate logs and condense it, right, or shrink it down into a single log, you're doing the same thing as condensing logarithmic functions. Um, so if I have something like this, starting off, I'm starting off now in the opposite direction, right? I'm starting off where it's expanded already and I want to go in this direction and condense it into a single log. So first of all, these properties, they always have coefficients of one. So, you know, I got to get rid of the coefficients first. That was the last thing that I did, you know, when I was expanding, right? I got rid of the um, exponents and made them coefficients. So now I'm going to go in the opposite direction and make the coefficients the exponents. So the two is going to convert into the exponent using the, pro uh, the power property here. So this becomes a log base 10 of x to the second. And then there's no coefficient here other than one, so that's fine. That's going to stay as log y. A difference of separate logs, a difference of separate logs converts or condenses into a single log of a quotient. So this is going to become a single log of a quotient. This is the numerator, and this is the denominator. Um, keep the base the same. This is my single log. Is this the same as this? Are they the same? Does this look the same as this? This is a typical mistake that um, students make all the time. When you see a difference of two separate logs, they go here. And that's a big mistake. That's a big accident because these are not the same at all. They are not the same at all. No, no, no. Do not make that mistake. Why am I saying take a sum or difference and convert it into a single log? What does single mean? It means one. One log. This says two logs. This is one log. A single log of a quotient comes from a difference of separate logs. Do not make this error. This is two different logs. No, I don't like that. No, no, no. Bad. Be careful you don't do that, okay? I see it all the time. Do not make that mistake. Um, let me do another condensing. Let's do... One third ln of of uh, what do we? No, I won't make it e. Again, if I have a difference of two separate logs, and I want to condense it into a single log, I should only write log once and a difference becomes a quotient after the log. It doesn't become a quotient of separate logs. Don't make that error, okay? Very, very important, very, very different. Single log, condense it into a single log. This is two different logs. These are different expressions. Don't make that error, okay? Um, let's do one third times the natural log of x plus one half times the natural log of y um, minus two times the natural log of z. So obviously I have a summer difference of separate logs and obviously it's like the end of an expansion, right? These are all, where is it? These are the expanded cases. It's like the end of doing this process, going from here to here. So I'm going in the opposite direction now. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of the coefficients, correct? So um, one third is going to go into the exponent using the power property. So I'm going in this direction, right? From here to here, the coefficient in front of a log becomes the exponent on the whole thing. So ln of x to the one third plus ln of y to the one half minus ln of z to the second. Now, I'm going to rewrite this because what I said before was a one-third rational exponent can be rewritten as a radical expression, and this is a cubed function. So one-third, so again, the denominator of the exponent is the index of the radical. 
plus I can rewrite this as ln of y under the square root rather than one half. So just to show you how you could do it different ways, okay, from rational to radical form and back and forth. You need to know how to do that too. So the denominator of the rational exponent is the index of the radical, okay? Um, I'm not done condensing. I want to condense it into a single log, and I have three logs written here. Don't confuse this with the um, base, right? It's a natural log, so the base is e. This is the index of the radical. So there's three different expressions here, and, you know, these only do two at a time. So I'm going to do two at a time. I'm going to start with these two. And after you guys practice this enough, you can go really straight from here to the answer. It becomes very simple because um, you do this. It's only three properties over and over again. So a sum becomes a single log of a product, the cubed root of x times the square root of y. Bring the rest of it down, minus ln of z second. I don't want you to confuse this. This is all part of this single log, right? I had a sum of two separate logs, and I condensed it into a single log of a product with the same base. I had a sum of two different logs, and I condensed it into a product of the same log, of a single log with the same base. Now I have a difference of two different logs with the same base. I have a difference of two different logs with the same base, and they condense into a single log of a quotient. A single log of a quotient. Here's my numerator. The cubed root of x times the square root of y over, here's the denominator, z squared, and it's the single log of this quotient. Now I have a single log written. I can't condense anymore because condensing goes into a single log. And here is my final condensed single logarithmic expression from this expanded sum or difference um, of logarithmic expressions. Um, one more I want to do. At least one more, and then we'll see what you guys think after that. Um, let's do, so log base 4 of x plus 2. Um, plus log base 4 of x minus 3. Um, then I'll do plus. 2 log base 4 of x minus 2, whatever. Okay. So I have a sum of three separate logarithmic functions, and I want to condense it into a single log. Again, if I have coefficients other than 1, I'm always going to start with that. So these have no problems. They have coefficients of 1. But this coefficient is 2, so I'm going to start with that. I'm just going to bring these down log 4 of x plus 2 plus log base 4 of x minus 3, just copying them down. This 2 becomes the exponent on this whole expression. Remember I said that? This whole expression has to have that exponent to be able to use that power property. So log base 4 of this whole expression to that second power, right? That's the only way that this property works. This exponent can only be um, a coefficient if it's on this whole expression. So if it were x squared minus 2, I would not be using this property. So let's start with these two, two at a time. So I have a sum of separate logs with the same base, and I'm going to convert them into a single log. And when I have a sum of separate logs, when I convert it into a single log, it becomes a product. And I might FOIL this out to simplify that. But let me bring the rest of this down log base 4 of x minus 2 squared. Um, well, let's FOIL this out because I just want to show you that sometimes you might see this as a product of these two expressions or you might see it FOILed out. x squared outer is negative 3x, inner is positive 2x, so minus x minus 6 plus log base 4 of x minus 2 squared. Right, So sometimes you see it like this, and sometimes you see it like this. And I want you to also recognize that if I am expanding, right? let's say I were going in the opposite direction, don't forget that if these pop up, you can rewrite these as products and then continue to expand. So be careful with stuff like this where it does factor and becomes a um, product. 
So if you were to, again, expand something like this, you want to make sure you factor it to expand it completely. So if I were going the opposite way, I wouldn't get this unless I were to factor this out. Just a, just a little note, okay? Um, but I'm going and condensing them. So I'm going to write a single log, and I'm not done. Um, a single log. So I have a sum of two separate logs, and I'm going to condense it into a single log. And when I have a sum of separate logs, it condenses into a single log at the same base of a product. So this times this. Okay, and it's log of this whole thing. I can't really, you know, condense anymore. I could if I want multiply this out and multiply the whole thing. I'm not going to do all that, but this is my final condensed case. Okay. Um,